Hello there! I am so glad that you could be here today. I just want to remind you guys real fast that I do have an email address, newmemphisminis at gmail.com. So if you have ideas for the channel or you want to submit questions for the 500 subscriber Q&A, feel free to do it there. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Rich. The channel is called New Memphis. As far as you know, when's the last time you checked? And our hero this week proves that you don't need ideology or kindness or basic human decency to spread your religion at least not when you're heavily armed. Today's project is the second to last one in the Blackstone Fortress box, which is kind of, feels a little sad, but also is good. It means we're making progress, and I am excited to get to Ryan and Rouse next week. But today, it's Taddeus the Purifier, crazy priest with a recipe book. Thanks, Matt. Taddeus works very hard to spread the good word of Emperor Julia Child across the Imperium. I honestly started off just having no idea of what I wanted to actually do with this model, so I'm really glad to see that it turned out so well. Especially because I wanted him to sort of work as a dark inquisitor for our traitorous guardsman army that we're building here. It's never going to be tabletop legal, but I, I couldn't really care less about that if I'm being honest. Also, tragically, I am out of beer today. However, I've been working hard over the last couple of weeks to recreate this espresso amaretto that I had last time I was in New York, so we're going to try to recreate it today. Milk's foaming, go ahead and pour this. I love espresso and amaretto. It is one of my favorite things. Certainly better than that bourbon. My God, oh, that almost killed me. There we go. Right. Oh no, no, no. Mm. We're making it work. That's the good stuff. Let's get started. Now, we won't start with any kit bashing on the model itself, because honestly, I really like this model. Taddeus conveys being that heavy bruiser, but still has tons of movement and cool details that draw the eye from the inside out. However, I do have a really fun idea I've been waiting to use on his base, so let's get gluing on some of these pieces I've picked out. As always, my go-to glue for plastic bits is Tamiya Plastic Cement, which also helps with these terrible mold lines Corn Demons have. Looking good, but it does need one more thing. Let's see, uh, yeah, let's, let's fit that right in there, and we are all set. Here he is after being primed with McCrag Blue. Obviously, I also started the basing, but I've, I've gone over that procedure so many times, I'm just not going to here. I will, however, go over the colors I use for the demon. At this point, I still didn't know what color scheme I wanted to use for Taddeus himself, so I started with what I did know and just moved on from there. We'll use black red for the body and the head of the corn demon. Very <laughs> half-assed. All of these colors are going to get buried under six more layers, so there's no reason to be careful at this stage. We'll also use German Extra Dark Green for the body of the chain sword and silver for its teeth. Finally, for the horn, we'll use the Blood God's favorite color, brass. I especially wanted to use this metallic though because hopefully the slight orange tints of Vallejo brass should help contrast with how much blue is going to be on the model. Well, that looks absolutely terrible. Let's see if we can find uses for these same colors on Taddeus. To make these vestments look like leather, we'll paint them with black red to start. Not bad. Now let's use brass for all of his trim. I added silver to his mace and white to his skin, but the footage got corrupted, unfortunately. In the next step, while I was adding azure to the base, I decided that it might be a good, fun color to use for the highlights on his robes as well. Oh man, this, this just did not feel like it was coming together. But, rather than quit, I'm going to make some smart color choices to try and bring this project around, and that starts with a wash of royal purple, which I think will help to add some richness to the shadows.
I also made sure to dab away any excess with a brush. Okay, now I was starting to see it. Let's keep on a roll with some highlights of white on the skulls and skin, plus on his book. Next, we will much more carefully trace the brass trim. To add some extra diversity, I thought it would be fun to use emerald and medium flesh tone on these seals and parchment. I don't think it ended up making a huge difference, but it's always good to look for those opportunities to add extra color. And it also happened to give me a really good idea for next week's project. Oh yeah, this is coming along nicely. I'm really starting to see it now. The robes are still way too bright, so I'll take a note from last week's project and mix a black wash with a touch of dark Prussian blue just for the clothing. Excellent! Now he is starting to look royal. A few more touches of azure should finish off his robes and vestments. All he needs now are just a few bold highlights to tie him together. And what color would I possibly choose other than Vallejo Clear Orange, the main character of this channel? But I think I'll save that for the big reveal. Give it up for Taddeus, the man who redefines what it means to be a Jesus freak. And if I could get away with the copyright, I would totally use that song in the big reveal. However, we'll have to settle, but I think you guys are going to enjoy this anyway. Not quite as satisfying as the beer stein. Okay, let's talk about two things I like about the model and one thing that I wanna do better next time. Okay, so I have to start with those blue and purple undertones. It ties the model together so well. It contrasts with the brass, it contrasts with the orange, and it just adds that air of royalty. Even on the little, I don't know, a servo skull, whatever they're called in Warhammer 40K lore. Even there, on that brass, those purple undertones looked so good, which I guess I did kind of know. This is actually not too far off in the scheme that I used for our corn-tainted ogren a few a few months ago at this point, man. So I had an idea that it would work, but I'm, I'm surprised at how well it did, and I'm really, really happy to see that that, uh, it just conveys that sense of royalty. Second thing has got to be those orange touches. Part of being an artist is knowing what to leave out, and just those those couple little points of that bright orange is just all you really needed just to make him look, I don't know, Jesus Freak is probably what I would go with again. And it will still allow him to stand out on a busy tabletop because they're still big enough that you can actually see those details on a busy tabletop. Which is always one of my biggest problems with a lot of Warhammer painting, at least
least ever since Instagram just ruined it. Now, as for the worst thing, which is also one of the best things, which is that basing and the corn demon that we built, who looks really cool and really funny. I love the idea of like a guardsman just shoving that chainsaw in his mouth to get shut up the corn demon with the big horn. I love it. I think it's thematic, it's interesting, it adds story to the model. It also means this thing is just never going to be tabletop legal because it just sticks so far out. And I probably could have changed the angle a bit to get that, you know, to where it should be, but God, do I just not care. <laughs> That's why I say it's the worst thing, but also the best thing. It's, it's, it'll remove this from ever being tabletop legal, but also, I don't know, do I really care? <laughs> I've never even played a game of Warhammer 40k, so I, I, I can't say that I'm super upset about it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really would love to know your thoughts on the model down in the, uh, in the comment section. Leave a like or a comment, it helps a lot. You guys are great. What else do I have? Nothing? I guess in that case, I will see you in the next one.